Greetings. I'm Dr. David Gersten. Today I'm going to take a different approach from my previous videos. I began this video with the intention of being less linear, more creative, and more freewheeling in my approach. That means that I didn't have a specific goal for how the video would progress or how it would end. My initial intention was to talk about SSRI antidepressants, but that quickly led me to Dr. Candace Pert, whose discovery of the endorphin receptor site eventually led to the manufacturing of SSRIs. We'll start by talking about receptor sites. You've all probably heard about them, and many of you take medications that work by interacting with receptor sites. The SSRI antidepressants, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which include Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft, Celexa, Luvox, and Lexapro, they work through their action at receptor sites. I was fortunate to spend time with Dr. Candace Pert, the scientist who discovered the first receptor site. I had several conversations with her before she became very famous. Dr. Pert's PhD thesis in pharmacology was the discovery of the endorphin receptor site. As soon as she made the discovery, the hunt was on to find out what went in that receptor site. The Americans found it and called it endorphins. The British found it and called it encephalins. Pert's discovery led to a new generation in drug research, namely drugs that work by fitting into receptor sites. We hear about receptor sites, but what are they and how do they work? Practically everyone talks about receptor sites as being like a lock and key. What fits into receptor sites? Ligands. And ligands include hormones, neurotransmitters, and peptides. Peptides are short chains of amino acids. According to Dr. Pert, 98% of all information and data transfer in human beings occurs at receptor sites. 2% of information transfer occurs in brain synapses. Every one of our body's 70 trillion cells is covered with thousands of receptor sites. Recent findings support the theory that recall is stored throughout the body, not just in the brain. Dr. Eric R. Kandel received a Nobel Prize for Medicine in 2000 for showing that memory resides at the level of the receptor. I repeat, memory resides at the level of the receptor. And that means the receptor sites, not just in the brain, but across the 70 trillion cells in our body. In one conversation with Dr. Pert when she was my guest on a radio show I hosted, she said that receptor sites are not like a lock and key. They're more like lotus flowers floating on the surface of a lake. The lake, the surface of the cell, is covered with lotuses. The roots of the lotus receptor site go deep into the cell. To quote Pert, we now understand that there is a dynamic relationship between ligand and receptor involving something called vibratory attraction. Sitting on the surface of the cell, the receptor wiggles and shimmies, changing from one configuration to another in a constant state of flux. This dance creates a vibration that resonates with a ligand that is vibrating at the same frequency, and they begin to resonate together." Unquote. When peptides bind to their receptors, an electrical charge is altered by ions flowing in and out of the cells, regulating nerve cells to fire or not. I've mentioned amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein and which make up about 65% of a dry body weight. Let's look at the various ways that amino acids connect with each other. In this graphic, there are numerous amino acid spheres with different colors. The different colors represent different amino acids. I'm using the metaphor of interconnecting beads to explain how one amino acid binds or connects to another amino acid. A peptide is a short chain of 2 to 50 amino acids. A protein consists of 50 or more amino acids and has a three-dimensional structure. You don't have to understand each atom and each chemical bond in an amino acid, a peptide, or a protein. Just imagine that each amino acid bead is the building block of amino acid chains. More than 99% of neurotransmitters are made from amino acids. Hormones, with the exception of steroids and sex hormones, are made of amino acids. And protein is 100% amino acids. 
Ligands, the compounds that bind with receptor sites, include neurotransmitters, hormones, and peptides, and they are mainly made up of amino acids. Receptor sites are proteins, which means they are 100% amino acids. Perp talks about cellular resonance and says, quote, it's like when you pluck one string on two different guitars in the same room. One will resonate with the other, both striking the same note. This creates a force of attraction, the way that peptides resonate with their receptors and come together to strike that emotional chord as they bind. And that's when the music begins. In this graphic, five or six guitars would be resonating with each other. In reality, a peptide is more like a chord than a single note, changing vibration not at one pitch, but several, giving a more complex richness of tone than a single note." Unquote. Dr. Pert's work played a very big role in the launch of the field of psychoneuroimmunology, or PNI. PNI studies how our emotions and thoughts impact the brain, hormones, nervous system, and immune system. Changes in the immune and endocrine systems create changes in your nervous system, and changes in our nervous system lead to changes in our emotions. Psychoneuroimmunology helps explain how our psychology affects our biology and how our biology affects our psychology. Pertz says, quote, there is an orchestrated bidirectional communication that occurs between the central nervous system and the immune system. This bidirectional communication has a big impact on both physical and psychological health and well-being, unquote. Because every component of the immune system has receptor sites for every neurotransmitter, we can think of the immune system as a floating nervous system. Dr. Pert moved to Washington, D.C. after her doctorate, working with the National Institutes of Health, the NIH, where she became head of the brain chemistry department at the NIH's National Institute of Mental Health. In 1974, while at the NIH, she received a call from Solomon Snyder, her PhD advisor at Johns Hopkins. He politely invited her to be a guest of his at an event. He didn't say exactly what the event was, but Pert agreed to attend. A few minutes later, Pert called him back and said, and I paraphrase, the event is the Lasker Award, isn't it? And you're going to take credit for my discovery, aren't you? Snyder replied, Candace, this is how the game is played. Pert hung up. She was not willing to play that game. She knew that she discovered the endorphin receptor site in spite of Snyder, who had opposed her PhD thesis. In general, he or she who wins the Lasker wins the Nobel Prize. When Pert realized what was going on with Snyder, she didn't roll over and play dead. How Pert lived her life was nearly as interesting as her scientific genius. Because she spoke up, no one won the Nobel Prize that year in Pert's field of pharmacology. If you do an internet search for discovery of endorphin receptor site, Pert's name may not even show up in your search. Such is the dishonesty when science does battle with politics. To continue in her words, quote, the attracting vibration is the emotion and the actual connection peptide to receptor is the manifestation of the feeling in the physical world. That's why I call peptides and the receptors the molecules of emotion, unquote. The title of Pert's first book is Molecules of Emotion, The Science Behind Mind-Body Medicine. In that book, Pert explains how Emotions influence molecules throughout the body, which in turn affects how we feel. Let me slow down for a second and paraphrase. Receptors and ligands come together, each of them wiggling and vibrating in this biochemical dance of attraction. Our emotional state dramatically affects how or if the connection between ligand and receptor takes place. Our emotions play a big role in how information transfer occurs throughout our body, not just in our head. To summarize, receptor site ligand binding affects emotion, and emotion affects information transfer in our 70 trillion cells. To quote Dr. Pert, music, which is a pattern vibration, can bypass the ligand 
and directly resonate with these receptors, literally acting like a peptide, a drug, or an emotion. The vibrational frequency of the musical notes turns on the receptor, setting in motion all kinds of cellular activities, unquote. In other words, your cells can respond to music as if a receptor has made contact with a hormone, neurotransmitter, or peptide, and that is amazing. This scientific finding provides a foundation for the field of music therapy, or just why people feel good in their body when they listen to music that they like. Dr. Pertz says, quote, your symptoms are in your body, but they are also in your mind, either consciously or subconsciously. Mind and body are not split in two. So what happens in one happens in the other also, unquote. So when you hear really bad news, you might tell people you're feeling it in your gut. That's because you really are feeling it mentally and physically in your gut. That is what the field of psychoneural immunology is all about. Dr. Pert wrote two books. The second one was How to Feel Good or How to Feel God. Here's the book cover. I've read this book three times so far. Don't expect to understand everything in this video the first time you watch it. But do expect that this information may cause a paradigm shift in how you think about health and healing. Candace Pert brought science to what I believe about the importance of the doctor-patient relationship. A healthy doctor-patient relationship inspires hope, which is necessary for healing. To quote Pert, when patients sense that doctors or nurses actually care about them and their suffering, then sudden quantum shifts occur. Caring is a deep, synchronizing vibration that produces a sudden shift to bring about a coherent healing state that happens in almost no time at all, unquote. In other words, a caring, compassionate communication can lead to a quantum shift in health. Doctors need to understand that how they connect with a patient is a critical ingredient in healing. Think about that. You see a psychiatrist because you're suffering emotionally. Chances are high that you will leave with a prescription for a drug that will knock out your sex drive and may leave you feeling emotionally numb. On top of the problem that brought you to a psychiatrist, some people leave that office feeling misunderstood and traumatized. If that trauma happens 5% of the time, it's too much. But I suspect that these issues happen much more frequently than 5% of the time. Unfortunately, most antidepressant prescriptions are now written by doctors who are not psychiatrists, who are not qualified at all to make psychiatric diagnoses. On top of the common SSRI side effects, getting off of these medications is often a nightmare. Candace Pert shared a comment with me that she shared with just about everyone. After explaining that every one of our 70 trillion cells is covered with thousands of receptor sites, she talked about GABA, our most calming neurotransmitter. GABA is an amino acid that is a neurotransmitter. According to Pert, and I paraphrase, every cell in our body is covered with GABA receptor sites, which means our body is hardwired for bliss, unquote. She added, the odd thing about this is that there isn't very much GABA in the blood. So why are there so many GABA receptor sites, unquote? Her theory took us into a brief conversation about Indian saints, sages, and yogis, many of whom meditate all day long. Pert wondered if these yogis were living in an altered state of consciousness that involved the brain's production of very high levels of GABA, enough GABA to leak out of the brain into the bloodstream and then bind with all those GABA receptor sites throughout the body, and not just in the brain. How do we tie this to the general topic of amino acid therapy? Let's review some definitions. Ligands, the things that fit into receptor sites, are hormones, neurotransmitters, or peptides. Peptides are short chains of amino acids. 
Every neurotransmitter except for acetylcholine is made from amino acids. Neurotransmitters are ligands that work by binding with receptor sites on neurons or nerve cells. Receptor sites are proteins, and proteins are made up entirely of amino acids. Without realizing it at the time, PERT was helping to lay the groundwork for the new field of psychoneuroimmunology and the new mind-body medicine. To quote PERT, the body is the unconscious mind, unquote. We do not know where the mind stops and the body begins. Dr. Larry Dossey coined the term non-local mind. To scientifically explain that the mind is not contained to the space between our ears. In fact, the mind is not bound by space or time and can affect human and non-human life from great distances. Because I believe that the mind is non-local and that the mind-body connection is real, I teach mind-body techniques to all my patients regardless of their diagnosis. Those who choose to do this work do much better than those who do not want to do this work or choose not to. This work involves meditation, interact with guided imagery, use of the breath, and various trauma techniques. Changing gears now, let's talk about modern psychiatry, a field that has failed to incorporate most cutting-edge science. Psychiatry residencies stopped training in psychotherapy about 25 years ago, leaving psychiatrists to diagnose and treat after 15-minute consultations. All too often, the treatment for anxiety, depression, panic, or OCD is an SSRI like Paxil, Prozac, or Zoloft. Like most doctors, during my medical school training, there was a single two-hour lecture on nutrition. So most psychiatrists don't know anything about amino acids, their role in creating neurotransmitters, or what a person feels like if a particular neurotransmitter is too high or too low. PERT's work should open up a doctor's mind and help him or her understand illness and health in a radically new light. Because SSRIs are prescribed like candy without any lab work to back up that decision, I want to share a few of Candace PERT's thoughts about the SSRIs. In one phone call with Dr. PERT, she said to me, Because of the damage the SSRIs are doing, I almost regret my discovery of the endorphin receptor site, unquote. A year later, I was still thinking about her comment. I tried to reach her after her role in the movie What the Bleep Do We Know, but she had become pretty famous and more difficult to reach. Two years ago, she died unexpectedly. I believe that what Dr. Pert was referring to was damage to receptor sites caused by the SSRIs. And that's probably one reason why many people find it very difficult to get off SSRIs. Their serotonin receptor sites may be permanently damaged. That's my educated guess about what Pert was referring to. Let's look at Pert's comment that the emotional environment surrounding a ligand and receptor site plays a very important role in how ligand and receptor site bind or even if they bind. Some people might get irritated about the implications. Some people might be thinking, that's like blaming me for being sick or being depressed. What am I supposed to do if my mood is making my entire body feel depressed? The science behind receptor sites tells us that the mind-body connection is one inseparable unit. Behavior and mood can change based on factors that are mental or factors that are physical. Peaceful, quiet walks on the beach or in a high mountain forest can and do quiet our minds and create healing at a cellular level. Put another way, a walk in nature makes us feel peaceful that peaceful feeling then becomes the environment in which receptor sites and ligands connect and bind. In future videos, I'll discuss strategic psychotherapy techniques that can improve our thoughts and moods without spending years in counseling. These strategies will affect the way ligands and receptor sites bind. 
if I leave you with the idea that the only thing I do is run lab tests and make recommendations for amino acid therapy and other nutrients, I would be sharing only part of what I do and would be giving you the message that the mind-body connection, emotion, thoughts, and beliefs don't matter. Let me say clearly that these all matter, and they matter a lot. Dr. Candace Pert pioneered the science of the mind-body connection, psychoneuroimmunology, and the role of receptor sites. Receptor sites are involved in quadrillions of chemical reactions every second. Neurotransmitters, hormones, and peptides work by binding at receptor sites. Emotion creates the environment in which ligand and receptor site attract each other. Music acts directly with receptor sites, totally bypassing the activity of ligands. In January 2005, a Time magazine special reported that happiness, hopefulness, optimism, and contentment decrease the risk of heart and lung disease, as well as diabetes and hypertension. Depression, on the other hand, increases the risk of these and a host of other illnesses. A doctor's caring, empathy, and non-judgmental attitude can inspire hope, and that can literally set real healing in motion before any formal treatment is administered. Some people may think that this information about the mind's role in creating illness blames the sick person. I think it empowers people. The mind and the mind-body connection play a role in illness. But I'm not negating the fact that each of us is exposed to potentially 70,000 toxins per day. That is not a mental issue. Today, we've reviewed aspects of mind-body medicine, psychoneuroimmunology, receptor sites, SSRI antidepressants, and the role of caring in healing. I could have devoted at least one video to each of these topics, but everything in our mind and body is interconnected. This video has attempted to break out of conventional linear medical thinking to share the big picture all at one time. Thank you for listening. If you like this, please select the like button below and subscribe. Have a great day.